Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story on Netflix, is a disturbing and graphic series exploring Jeffrey Dahmer's increasingly demented crimes through a frighteningly accurate portrayal from Evan Peters. But what did the series leave out from Dahmer's real life? Did Jeffrey Dahmer know Tony Hughes before killing him? What was Dahmer's childhood really like? The Netflix series showed the real-life footage of the hazardous materials team removing body parts from Dahmer's home. This team was made up of young people, some were not even 18 years old, including the men who carried the blue barrel down the stairs from Dahmer's apartment. But the details of what the police found inside were not specifically mentioned in Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Inside Dahmer's house, he had an altar dedicated to himself, specifically his murders. The altar featured two skeletons of victims, as well as seven skulls of his victims. Inside his refrigerator, the police found four severed heads, which Dahmer was planning to add to his altar. Dahmer planned the altar to have 12 skulls from his 17 victims, and at the time of the arrest, he had 11. Dahmer created a blueprint for his shrine, which would have had the skeletons on each side and the skulls arranged behind the table where he photographed his many victims. The Netflix series ends with Dahmer's death from fellow prisoner Christopher Scarver, portrayed by Furley Mack in the Netflix series, but many of the details of Dahmer's death and Scarver were left out. Scarver killed Dahmer when they were both inmates at Columbia Correctional Institution, located in Portage, Wisconsin. When Scarver killed Jeffrey Dahmer, they were on cleaning duty together, along with another prisoner, Jesse Anderson. When the group was left unsupervised for only 20 minutes, Scarver beat Dahmer to death with a metal bar, and he followed this murder with attacking and killing Anderson, who was convicted for murdering his wife. Many believe Scarver was motivated by race when he killed Dahmer, whose victims were primarily men of color. Years later in 2015, Scarver said he crossed the line with some people, prisoners, prison staff. Some people who are in prison are repentant, but he was not one of them, during an interview with the New York Post. One aspect of Dahmer's childhood that was not represented in the Netflix series was his use of alcohol starting at an extremely young age. Many sources suggest that he drank alcohol starting from the age of 13 and continued throughout his life. Dahmer would hide bottles of alcohol in an army surplus jacket, and he also showed up to school drunk and hid alcohol inside his school locker, even going so far as to drink secretly during class. Throughout his life, Dahmer referred to alcohol as medicine. As he got older, his dependence on alcohol grew and became part of his rituals as a serial killer, often getting drunk with his victims before killing them. This use of alcohol started in his childhood and slowly became an even bigger part of his life as he grew older and his alcoholism influenced his killings. Dahmer's drinking also eventually became the cause of him being kicked out of military service. In episode 6 of Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, the focus is spent mostly on Dahmer's relationship with Tony Hughes, a 31-year-old deaf man he met at a gay bar in Milwaukee. Tony Hughes was an aspiring model when he was killed at the extremely young age of 31. The Netflix series series shows Dahmer killing Hughes the night they met. But in real life, multiple friends of Hughes said he knew Jeffrey Dahmer for one to two years, starting in 1989, before the night Dahmer murdered him. Tony Hughes was last seen at the 219 Club, and Hughes' mother knew her son had a friend in Milwaukee, but only knew his first name, Jeffrey. The show depicts Dahmer meeting Hughes and killing him during their first night together, bludgeoning him to death. Dahmer claimed he had not met Hughes before this night, but multiple accounts go against this, suggesting they knew each other for an extended period, which is not how the show chose to depict Tony Hughes' interactions with Dahmer. Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, does depict elements of Dahmer's childhood, especially moments suggesting his father, Lionel, was responsible for Jeffrey Dahmer's fascination with death. But these details were elaborated and sensationalized for the series. In real life, Lionel Dahmer taught his son how to preserve animal bones, thinking his son was interested in chemistry and biology. Lionel did not search for roadkill to dissect together with his son, which is how their childhood relationship is depicted in the Netflix series. In addition to this change, the Netflix series omits physical aspects of Jeffrey Dahmer's childhood and health. Starting when he was newborn, Jeffrey Dahmer's legs were in casts for the first four months of his life. He also wore lifts in his shoes until he was six years old. Dahmer's childhood also started to show his violent tendencies. When Jeffrey Dahmer was 13 years old, he nailed a dog carcass to a tree and had its head impaled on a stick. He invited his friends from school to see the dog and claimed he had found this disturbing discovery rather than causing this pain himself. Throughout his whole life, Dahmer had been fascinated by death, and the series does explore this, but does not go as much in detail about certain aspects of his childhood. And the Netflix series also creates scenarios, especially moments connected with Dahmer's relationship with his father, making it seem like all of Dahmer's interests in death and dissection were pushed by his father. And this even led to Dahmer's father, Lionel, suing the Netflix series for both glorifying and glamorizing his son's crimes, but also suggesting he's the reason his son turned into a cannibalistic serial killer. In addition to the way Netflix represented Dahmer's crimes, Netflix also did not contact Lionel when making the show, or their earlier series, The Jeffrey Dahmer Tapes. Dahmer's assistant,
president spoke to the New York Post and said, Lionel and his power of attorney are gathering information and looking at a possible lawsuit against the production team, or possibly Netflix. Lionel's assistant also said, Lionel was a very caring father. He was just trying to do his best in a time of uncertainty, and went on to comment on Lionel's thoughts about the Netflix shows. He thinks that none of this should have been made. All the information that needs to be public is right there in his book. Everything else is just glamorized, and provides attention to details that aren't proven fact. One aspect of Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story that is not accurate to real life, is the identity of his next-door neighbor. In the Netflix series, his neighbor is Glenda Cleveland, played by Niecy Nash. But in real life, Glenda Cleveland lived in a nearby building of Oxford Apartments. Not in the same building as Dahmer. But Glenda Cleveland did contact the police from Dahmer's suspicious behavior, which her daughter Sandra Smith and niece Nicole Childress had witnessed. Sandra and Nicole saw Conorak's synthasymphone escape from Dahmer, who chased him into an alley. Even though Conorak escaped, the police returned him to Dahmer, who claimed Conorak was his 19-year-old boyfriend, not his 14-year-old victim. In real life, Jeffrey Dahmer's next-door neighbor was Pamela Bass, who was often not suspicious of his behavior. Bass even went over to Dahmer's apartment multiple times and at times had a beer with him. Even on one occasion, she accepted a sandwich from him. The Netflix show depicts this scene happening with Glenda Cleveland, who denies the sandwich. In real life, Pamela accepted, and has since felt nauseous thinking back about all the times she spent in Dahmer's apartment. When interviewed for the documentary The Jeffrey Dahmer Files, Bass said, I have probably eaten someone's body part. Bass also said, everyone in the building felt suckered. We all felt that Jeffrey Dahmer had played us. It's really hard to become fond of someone to find out that actually that person had a dagger in your back. I thought this guy was my friend. Netflix combined Bass with Cleveland, changing some of the story along the way, and leaving out elements of Bass and her frightening experiences with Dahmer. Some aspects of Dahmer's crimes were left out or changed for the Netflix series. This disturbing Netflix series has been accused of glamorizing Dahmer's crimes, but other viewers have praised the series on its authenticity and focus on making sure the true stories of the victims are told. How successful do you feel the series was in telling the story with respect to Dahmer's victims? Share your thoughts with us in the comments, and make sure to subscribe to see more videos exploring your favorite movies and TV shows.